This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Give yourself a break, man. Give yourself a break. I mean that. And it requires emotional maturity to be able to give yourself a break and not always be so, oh, man, I don't even know what to call it, you know. Have a little interest or pleasure in doing things. I guarantee you, man, your, your whole life will change, and you'll really get a hold of what Jesus was saying when he says that I have come, that you might have life to the full, in abundance, until it overflows. And, and I'm talking about all of life. Text to give with Secure Give is a fast, easy way to give from anywhere, anytime. It's just two quick steps. First, text the keyword CDMBC followed by the amount you like to give to 74483. Second, when asked to confirm, just text Y and your transaction is complete. That's all there is to it. Text to give, the fastest, easiest way to give on the go. Vow to make it a better place Let every heart that means to know Your love is here to stay Ooh, It's time we live a new life Let us love shine bright in you We're saved by His grace So we embrace your love today We are changed Number six, here's another sign that you are growing emotionally. Number six, uh, you stay resilient. And in other words, in the face of up to be, you know, when you're up, when you're facing something that upsets you, or maybe you are facing a setback in life or a disappointment, well, when you're emotionally mature, uh, you'll acknowledge your feelings and identify what can be done. And then decide what steps to take to move on. When you're resilient, the, the, the bad day doesn't stop you. When you're resilient, the, the bad situation doesn't stop you. You take a deep breath and say, all right, let's, let's get up and walk. Yeah. All right, okay, so yeah, that happened. That was bad. I'm disappointed. I really hate that happened. I'm hurt that that happened. I'm having to deal with all of these different feelings, but I am, a, I am mature. I am an emotionally mature person. So, you know, ain't no use of me standing in the corner and waddling and whining. Let's just go and do what I need to do. I remember the first time that I experienced a massive attack publicly on something that I just really believed in. And I just felt like, man, I felt like I had been thrown away. I just, I just could not understand what people's problems were. And I was in a corner, and I just thought, you know what? Either, I, either I'm going to stay in this corner and be defeated, or I'm just, you know... And so I decided to just go outside. I mean, it was everywhere, worldwide. I decided to go outside and go to the grocery store and hold my head up. And I walked in the grocery store, and they go, there he is. And they started taking their pictures and everything. <laughs> and, and I was just amazed. And I'm like, I'm, I, you're not, you're not going to let me, you're not going to make me, you know, crawl up in a corner. And, and you know, kind of like the, I mentioned this guy a lot on Tombstone, where uh, 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 Kurt Russell, I think it was, went and, and, and slap the guy and say, what are you going to do, just stand there and bleed? And uh, sometimes you've got to be resilient. You've got to stand in the face of adversity and, and in the face of setback and in the face of things not working. And, and, and you just got to say, you know what? Um, let me get up, dust myself off, because I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting, okay? So maybe I turned a little to the right there. I'm just going to keep going and do what I need. You, when, you, when you are maturing emotionally, you are resilient. You face the, the uh, upsets, the setbacks. You face the disappointments, and you acknowledge how you feel. I had to acknowledge at one time recently, that hurt me. That's the first time I ever did that in 40 years. I acknowledge that hurt me and disappointed me when that was done to me. And, um, you know, and then I just decided, I, I, for some reason, I guess I felt better, and I'm like, wow, I... And, and, and I told my wife, I said, you know, I was praying. I was walking and praying, and I said, that hurt me. 
And, uh, and God, cause God started dealing with me. He said, uh, how you feel about that? I said, you know, I'm good. He said, it hurt you, didn't you? I said, well, what am I going to lie to you and say no? <laughs> and so I, I said, yes. And I came in and told Taffy. And she said, good, good. I'm glad you realized that because it hurt my feelings too. <laughs> There's something about being mature emotionally to identify, you know, what, how you feel, and then you're able to look at what needs to be done. And then you decide on the steps that need to be done. But you need to locate yourself emotionally. And that's okay to do that as Christian people. It's okay to locate yourself emotionally. I'm disappointed. That hurt me. That hurt my feelings. I mean, you don't go around broadcasting it every time you see somebody. Somebody call, hey, how you doing? My feelings hurt, and I just want you to know. No, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you acknowledging this to yourself. There's a self-realization about it that says, all right, so here's where I am. Now I'm getting ready to move on and do what needs to be done because an emotionally mature person knows how to be resilient. Number seven. Number seven, an emotionally mature person uh, they have a calm disposition. And I'm really appreciating this growth in my life because I just wouldn't have a calm disposition about nothing. I was so trying to press for excellence that when it didn't work out like I wanted to, I was not calm. I was an, a tyrant. I was just, I'd just go nuts, you know, and, and because all for the sake of, of excellence. But emotionally mature people they do get mad, but they do not let the emotions dictate their response, okay? Anger is something that's real. I'm not going to tell you don't get angry. The Bible says, be ye angry, but sin not. See, what God's concern was, don't let your anger control your emotions, okay? And then later I found out that anger was really uh, an expression of fear, that I noticed every time I would get angry, the real issue was fear. And I, and I finally had to deal with what am I afraid of? The real issue was fear. And so what happens is that it, it's important to, as you mature in your emotions, and none of, the, none of us are at, you know, these are just signs, but there's always growth in every one of the signs. I don't stand up here and, and you're not sitting there proclaiming to be 100%. It's just you know, these are signs that you are maturing emotionally. I don't know how far you'll get in that mature uh, stage, but, you know, at least you can tell you're on the right path by locating some of these things here. And a calm disposition. So I started praying, Lord, I think I'm going to be a man of ease, a man of peace, and a man of calmness, that I'm just not going to just be the guy that flies off the handle all the time because that just represents a spiritual, uh, 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 emotionally immature person. Uh, and, and that's something that, you know, as Christians, we got to get a hold of because really our emotional displays will say a lot about our spiritual maturity as well. But emotionally, man, we just got to learn how to deal with these things. Number eight, number eight, here's a sign of emotional maturity. You believe in yourself. You believe in yourself. Emotionally mature people don't have a false sense of self that is ego-based and deluded. You don't have a false sense of self that's ego-based. I mean, your ego is all in a way, and, 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 and it's deluded. But they do have an, a, a, an optimistic type of attitude in their own ability. Um, in other words, you're, you're, you're pretty... You've made your mind up that I'm going to be pretty positive about things when I can be negative about things. You, you've made your mind up that, yeah, I can be negative about anything I choose to be negative about. But I don't think I will. I just don't think I will. I, I, sometimes you've got to make your mind up, even when you're in your relationships. You know what? I, don't, I just don't think I'm going to let you get on my nerve today. <laughs> just not going to do that. You just got to... You gotta, you, you, that's an emotionally mature person. I'm just... I'm, not, I'm just not going to let you do that today. I mean, you've done it for the last five days, and I don't think I'm going to let you make me cuss today. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay? You know, I believe in myself enough to believe that, you know, I don't have to give my power to somebody else. And that's basically what you do. You turn your power over to somebody else. And today, we're turning our power over to, to social media. 
It is amazing. You can get 5,501 great comments, and you stay stuck on the one. The one talking about your hair, or the one talking about your outfit, or you thought you were sharp on your Instagram post, and they, somebody, you had no idea. People could be so mean and talk about how nasty and ugly you look. And you like, now, now you're going to the section of the internet where you can see if you can find out where this person live at. <laughs> can I get a witness? Don't raise your hands up. Where you live at? Where you live at? Because I'm coming for you. I bet you won't come to my house and say that. I wish you would. Because you have those, those, those social media assassins. And, and listen, the internet is... Is, is undefeated. So don't, 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 if, if that bothers you that bad, get off of it. All right, because you don't need the internet to give you validation. I said you do not need the internet to give you validation. All right? But a part of your emotional maturity is going to come when, when you know how to, to, to establish belief in yourself and, and uh, how you handle those. Number nine, approachability approachability. Emotionally mature people are able to and prefer to talk with people, not at them. Are you approachable? You're able to talk to people and not at people. Sometimes I wonder, like, who do people think they are? You know, I, and I really, I really hate to see folks talking at somebody like they're, they, they don't have any value. And when you are emotionally mature, one of the signs, and this is one of the ones I think most important, is, uh, you know, are you able to talk with people? Are you able to associate with people? It's, it's something about... Uh, Something more important than your college degree and your intellect, and that is your likability. With your college degree and your internet, I still don't have to hire you if I don't like you. Because you're not likable. And then there's some people who are likable without a college degree, and they get hired, and somebody, you know, the boss like, I don't even know why I'm hiring you, I just like you. And we better learn that lesson, that people don't have to hire you if they don't like you. That nobody has to do anything for somebody they don't like. So we need to take a quick course on being likable. Now, I don't mean sucking up, but I just, you know, just how you, just, just this simple thing here. Are, can you talk with people and just not talk at them? Why, why would you want to make people seem small? I'll tell you why. Because the way you treat yourself is how you treat others. Okay? And you're treating yourself the way that you're treating yourself because you're emotionally immature. And that emotional immaturity always like, likes to, you know, reflect what we see about ourselves onto other people. And that's just, just, just immature. It's really helped me a lot because I can look at people now and instead of me getting angry, I'm just like, they're just immature. They'll be all right. I, I mean, I got a revelation on people going to do what they want to do. It has, it has brought me great calm. I am calm and I am cool. I ain't trying to repeat nothing a hundred times. I'm like, people going to do what they want to do. So now I can either be a target for them to blast or just say, you know, love you, later, people do what they want to do. And you probably would learn something of yourself. I mean, it's just, nah, you know, I ain't going to go right here. I just don't understand why, why they just would do that and why they would just say that. Because they want to. Because they want to. It's, 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 it's no better than wondering why do people sin. I just don't know what I'm saying. And we love to, there it is, we blame the devil. Blame game, all right? Why do people sin? Because they want to. I don't know why they would go to bed with that person they ain't married. Because they want to. Get that in your head, because they want to. 
Well, they're just full of the devil. No full of the devil than you are. They just want to. People do what they want to do until they make up their mind that they want to do something different. And that's what life does. Life, life is filled with a lot of different things. I heard a Christian say one time, you know, if you do these five things, uh, then you won't have problems. That is the biggest lie I've ever heard. You can do all those five things flawlessly, and you still going to have situations to happen because life is designed that way to bring us to a place where we mature physically, where we mature emotionally, and where we mature spiritually. So if you're looking for this, this little day to show up one day and all of your troubles will be over and you can sing the song, soon we'll be done with the troubles of the world. No, you ain't. You're going to have trouble until you leave the planet. You understand? And some of you, when you leave the planet, might have a little trouble leaving the planet. <laughs> going to happen? Well, I tell you what, what kind of preacher get in the pulpit and tell people they're going to have trouble? The, the one that wants to tell the truth. <laughs> but Jesus made it clear. He says, listen here, I've overcome tribulation. Trust me and I'll get you through it. Trust me and I'll get you through it. Now, trouble don't last always. So when you get a vacation, enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy it. When there's peace, oh, enjoy it. When ain't nobody home but you, enjoy it. Put your pajamas on, get your popcorn, pull up Netflix, enjoy it. Because it's not going to be like that always. He'll give you a little break. And I've lived long enough to know it comes and you get that little peace, enjoy it. It comes, but don't, get, don't live in this fool paradise. I mean, you can have everything fixed from your past and there'll be something new. And God going to take you through that something new. And that's, that's how life is. I don't, I don't walk in this fable and fantasy anymore that if I do these five things, then I am going to be flawless for the rest of my life. When the Bible said, they that live godly shall suffer persecution. And that doesn't mean that godly people are going to be absent from the persecution that comes with life. Life trains and life gives you opportunity to grow and life gives you a, a, a greater uh, insight on the wisdom that you might not have got out of books, but you can sure get out of a book whooping that came from life. Y'all don't like me here. I ain't coming to this church no more because I don't believe that scripture. Baby, I, this is one area where I can, I can very boldly say, I don't care what you believe, keep living. Keep living. Well, I ain't had no problem in the last month. Go on, go on, let's go to the next month. Okay? And if you get that one, no problem. Praise the Lord. Go to the next month. Hey, keep on going. You can have eight months. Enjoy it. <laughs> Number 10. Here's the final sign I want to give you of, of emotional maturity. You can tell when you're maturing emotionally when you share a good sense of humor. Quit taking everything so serious, like what you were doing right now. I can't believe he's saying that all oh, my Bible to eat all of shot. Just stop it. Emotionally mature people realize that all of life can't be taken seriously. But they realize the importance of having fun and laughter in life as a great coping mechanism and pressure release from stress. You have to do that. You have to do that sometimes when things aren't going right. You got to figure out, you know, if I'm going to deal with this, uh, let me order me some fun. Let me, let me, let me go to a game. Let me, let me, let me, I, I need, I need to have some fun. I need a, a way to some kind of mechanism where I can release the pressure and, and, and the stress of life. Let me, you know, let me hang out with people who at least know how to laugh and they don't think it is a sin to laugh. <laughs> they don't think it's a sin to have fun. Yeah. You need to hang out with people with a sense of humor, a great sense of humor. You follow what I'm saying? I mean, Taffy and I, we, we have friends with, we, that we can laugh like hurt 
is so funny. And sometimes you know them so well, they ain't even got to say nothing. You already know what they're thinking. <laughs> and you just, you just, and it's okay. It's okay. And I'm, I'm trying to get church folks to, listen, I, I, I love it that people are growing spiritually, and I love it that you're serious about your relationship with God and, and all of that kind of stuff, and I love it. And, 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 and yeah, there are times that, that, that that'll be a blessing to people. You know, I don't want to be, you know, you can't have fun all the time, but neither do you need to be stressing out all the time. So ask God to help you to find that balance. Life is a balance, man. Help, God, help me to find that balance. I feel like I'm in a, a counseling session tonight with the whole, whole group. Help me to find that balance in life where I can, um, you know, have a good time. I enjoy my wife. She is so much fun. She's hilarious to me. I mean, even getting up in the morning sometimes, just, I can just look at her and I just start laughing. I just, and she's like, what you laughing at? You know, and then I'll, you know, sometimes she'll get her a little snack, you know, some um, M&Ms or whatever, you know, some cookies or something, and then I'll walk in on her while she, she has a little snack pile that I didn't know about that the kids showed me the other day. They said, oh, you don't know, no, you don't know about mama's sna uh, snack, snack pile? Oh, here it is right here. And I look down there, I'm looking at all this uh, baby roof and lemon cookies and I'm like, God, I said, why everybody else do about the snack stash itself for me? <laughs> and so I walk in there and see her kind of, you know, chewing on something. She'll look at me and she'll say, don't judge me. <laughs> Learn. Give yourself a break. Okay? Give yourself a break. All right? Thank you. Some of y'all sound like, thank you, I'm free. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Man, we went to the Anita Baker concert on Valentine's Day. God almighty, no boy. Ooh, and, and Tabby got excited. She started bouncing. And there was this little church lady on the right-hand side. <laughs> and she wanted to make sure I knew she was there. Hello, Pastor Dollar. So Steph, Steph started dancing stuff, and I would have, but I, I, I was distracted by the church lady behind me. <laughs> I'm like, Taffy, then calm down. Somebody, the church lady. So she behind us, we're going to be on YouTube tonight, and we don't go to slide out. And I thought, man, forget the church lady. She here. She here. The only difference is she can't have a good time because she's not emotionally deliberate, and Taffy's bouncing all over the place having a good time, grabbing me and everything, and I'm like, Lord, have mercy, they're going to think we're trying to get it on, on the couch, baby. Check it out. Give yourself a break, man. Give yourself a break. I mean that. And it requires emotional maturity to be able to give yourself a break and not always be so... Oh, man, I don't even know what to call it, you know. Have a little interest or pleasure in doing things. I guarantee you, man, your, your whole life will change, and you'll really get a hold of what Jesus was saying when he says that I have come, that you might have life to the full, in abundance, until it overflows. Did you know your emotions determine your level of victory? In Creflo Dollar's seven-part series, How to Mature in Your Emotions, he identifies the key to unlocking a successful life through maturing spiritually and emotionally. An emotionally mature person will work towards a better understanding and a course of action moving forward. Responsibility equals accountability, and accountability equals ownership. It's okay to fail. It's okay to make mistakes. Nobody is perfect, and only by failing and making mistakes can you learn and get better. That's life. It's when you take responsibility for your life that you discover how powerful 
you truly are. This must-have series is available for a love gift of 40 U.S. dollars or more for CDs or 50 U.S. dollars or more for DVDs. Call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit creflodollarministries.org and click e-store today. No matter where you are on your personal journey, the Word of God can reach you. Tune in to World Changers every Sunday at 10 a.m. or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have you ever had God save somebody in your family and you they, they were no good for nothing dirty, but he saved them anyway, sanctified them, filled them with the Holy Ghost? Text Watch Now to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about services and stream times. I open my heart, I open my mind, I open myself up to God possibilities, to God happenings, God encounters, whatever He wants to do, however He wants to do it, but I refuse to live in the past. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are World Changers. See you online. The 2020 Vision Partner Program at Creflo Dollar Ministries is more than a program. It's a relationship, a covenant that was designed to make a high impact in your life, our lives, and the lives of millions around the world. Partnering with CDM puts you on the front lines of spreading the gospel of grace to all corners of the globe and providing aid to those in need. We invite you to join us today. Stay connected via our online partner portal and receive a new partner letter every month. Free downloads, confessions, study notes, and more. Text 2020 partner to 51555 to become a 2020 vision partner today. You can interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere. Engage with Christ on a deeper level. Develop your walk with the Lord and strengthen your faith. All of this is at your fingertips with our state-of-the-art custom-designed app. You got to come to the end of yourself where you recognize, I need a savior. I need an advocate. I need a peace offering. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages, sermon series, and more. The app puts you right in the sanctuary with live streaming of services. You can receive practical advice for applying the Word of God to your life every day with our daily devotionals. There's something about the mercies of God when others want to count you out and stone you and all kinds of things, or pointing fingers, but thank God for Jesus being right there. Add events to your calendar, set reminders, get directions, share with friends, and even give securely through this platform. Visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555 today. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.